Hey guys, welcome to the Acro Reef YouTube channel. In this video, I'm going to tell you a little bit about this reef, and I'm going to show you the equipment that I use to manage the day-to-day -day tasks, as well as the lighting, the cooling, and the automation behind it. So to start things off, let's talk about the tank. This is the Red Sea Reefer 425XL. I've had this tank going for a little over three years now, and as you can see, it's mostly filled with acros. I've been in the hobby for over 20 years now, and quite frankly, within the first year of getting involved, there was just something about these types of corals that really stood out to me. Suffice it to say, it didn't take long for me to prefer this type of coral over any others out there. For lighting, I'm running the GHL Mitras LX7. I have three of these lights over this tank. Two of them have six clusters on them, and the middle one has four. I've had these lights for over six years now. I even had it on my last tank setup. And quite frankly, I really have no reason to change. These lights have done so well with, for my coral in terms of coloration and growth. As far as the light schedule goes, I have a 12 hour photo period. Within those 12 hours, I have an eight hour daylight period. The daylight itself runs at about 14 to 15 K. So it's a crisp blue appearance. Right now, it's the start of the day, so that's why it's a little bit more on the bluer side. For cooling, I have two GHL propeller breeze fans installed on the back glass of the tank. These are Proflux controlled, so if the temperature of the water were to climb, these fans would automatically start up and increase the fan speed if the temperature of the water continues climbing. When the temperature goes back to normal, the fans automatically turn off. As far as wave pumps go, I am using two Ecotech Fortec MP40 pumps and one GHL Versia Stream pump. These three pumps are controlled through the Proflux controller, so anytime I need to throw some food in for the fish or to feed the corals, I just tap a button on my tablet and it turns off these three pumps. So in terms of automation, this tank is heavily automated. For a controller, I'm using the GHL Proflux 4. I'm also using their dosing pumps, their testing stations, the ion director and the cage director, as well as more dosing pumps, which I will show you later on in the video. Um, as far as what I'm dosing, I'm dosing your standard calcium, alkalinity, magnesium supplements, um, as well as some trace elements from Fauna Marin. The ion director, in case you're wondering, is the measuring device that I use for automatically testing my calcium, my magnesium, potassium, nitrate, and sodium. I specifically use this device to give me readouts of those parameters once a day. And based on the outcome of those results, I have my Prophylux making the fine-tuned adjustments to the dosing pumps that are responsible for actually dosing those supplements. Right below it, I use the cage director. This is what I use to automatically test my alkalinity. And much like the ion director, I use it to fine-tune my alkalinity dosages. Right now, it's just in the middle of doing a test. I test four times a day with this one. Moving on to the other side of the cabinet, I have the Bubble King Double Cone 150 Protein Skimmer. This one, just like my lights, I have had for over six years and I brought it over from the last tank setup I had. In terms of control, I have the Prophylux turning the skimmer on and off based on how much skim it I have in the cup. When the cup gets full and it hits the float switch, the Pro Plus controller will automatically cut the power to the skimmer. And when it comes time to empty the skimmer cup, I installed this little put disconnect that I picked up from Amazon. So when the cup gets full, I just disconnect these pieces, skimmer turns off, I go clean the cup, and then I connect everything back together and it picks up where it left off. Next up, I have the Avast Marine Ozone Reactor with the accompanying Carbon Reactor. I use this in conjunction with the 
Ozone Tech Ozone Generator. This is also Profibus controlled. I have the controller running this for four hours at nighttime every day. Next, we have a lot of dosing lines. As I said earlier, this tank is heavily automated. Reason being, when I travel, I'd like to have the peace of mind that I have as many things under control as possible. As far as the return pump goes, I chose to use the Abyss A100. This pump also came from my last tank setup over six years ago. And much like the other two pieces of equipment mentioned earlier, this one's a workhorse and it just keeps on going. Next up, we have the webcam. The webcam I use only when I travel in case the Proflux ever gives me an alarm, whether it be because the sump water level is low or maybe the skimmer cup gets full, um, I'll get a notification through the GHL Connect app um, or email. And when I get that notice, I'll just log into the webcam. I'll pan around, zoom around in the sump so I can get an actual visual of what's going on and based on what I find, if anything, I can react on it. One last thing I wanted to mention that's on this side of the cabinet are the LED light strips that I picked up on Amazon. These are also controlled by the Profilux through the PLM ADIN expansion card that's installed in the controller um, and also this uh, breakout board accessory that also came from Amazon how these lights turn on and off, that is accomplished through this uh, magnetic contact switch here. So whenever I open and close the cabinet doors, the lights turn on and off uh, when needed. When it's opened, the lights turn on. When the doors are closed, the lights go off. All of that automated through the Profilux. Now that you've seen what's inside the main cabinet, I can show you what's inside the next one. Surprise, more automation. <laughs> As I said earlier, this tank is heavily automated. I put a lot of emphasis on automating specifically my dosing tasks. As I said earlier, I am dosing your standard calcium, alkalinity, magnesium supplements. These supplements in particular are from Fauna Marin. This is from their balling light method. Inside these containers, I have their uh, trace element supplements, uh, which boost your baseline elements. Uh, those are in my calcium and alkalinity containers. Next up, I am using their color elements line, also from Fauna Marin. Each bottle specifically contains a certain mixture of uh, trace elements that tend to boost certain coloration. One is for blues, the other is for greens, and another is for red. Moving on to other trace elements, I'm also dosing their elementals line. These are by no means a requirement, uh, but it does certainly make a big difference in improving a coral's overall uh, health. Their polyp extension is better, the growth is improved, um, and the, the vibrancy of the coral's tissue is also significantly improved. Um, with these specific supplements, uh, which are all on dosing pumps, these are just my extra bottles that I have on hand. Um, with these trace elements, I do tend to send in ICP tests uh, to their lab about every three to four weeks. I did recently start getting into the habit of doing ICP testing a few months back. Uh, since then, it has really, really helped me fine tune uh, specifically these, these elements. The last thing I wanted to point out in this cabinet was the ATO Reservoir. The ATO task is controlled by the Profilux controller through a float switch that is inside the sump. The reservoir itself holds about 10 gallons of water and is just about enough to get me through for 8 to 10 days depending on whether it's the winter or the summertime. And now we get to the last cabinet. Here is where I manage my automatic water change tasks. The dosing pump itself is a GHL Doser 2.2 Maxi. I use one pump to pull out 
the old water from the tank and another pump to put in the new water, which comes from this reservoir, also made by Bashsy. The reservoir itself holds 15 gallons of water and is just about enough to get me through one week worth of water changes. The water changes themselves happen four times a week and about three gallons of water is pulled out each time. Here I have my tablet that's mounted right next to the tank. This is my quick way of seeing the last readouts from the controller. As you can see, I can get info on my temperature, pH, salinity, redox, even living room temperature and the humidity of the room. I'll get my last test results from the KH director, the ion director, as well as information on the fill level for each dosing pump container. And as you can see, I'm tracking the, con the container fill levels for all of the dosing pumps that I'm using. If I scroll down, I'll also get live status updates from the three uh, flow pumps that I'm using, the two Vortex and the one Bersia Stream. And lastly on here, I have the chart. So if I ever wanted to get uh, some information on the you know last last bits of collected data I just drag my finger here and it and it tells me you know what those what those readings were at a given time so this is the last part of the equipment tour this is the backup power solution that I have for the tank in case I were to ever lose power I do have this integrated with the Proflux controller uh, so in case of a power outage the controller will shut off all of the non-essential equipment uh, thereby allowing this battery to run the rest of the tank for an even longer amount of time. In total, I was able to comfortably get about 10 hours of backup power with no interruption during an outage. If for whatever reason the power outage is longer than 10 hours, I do have a backup plan for this backup. I have, you can't see it back behind this cabinet, but behind it I do have a smaller battery which I am using specifically to provide backup power for my Vortec pumps for an additional 10 hours. So all in all, I can comfortably run the tank for 20 hours without any main power. And last thing I wanted to also point out is a future project that I do have in mind uh, for at some point this year. I do want to connect this solar panel to my battery backup. The whole idea is to try to take a part of the tank off the grid and make this entire setup a little more green. All right, that's the end of the video. Thanks guys for watching. If you liked what you saw today, go ahead and hit the thumbs up icon, comment if you'd like, subscribe, and don't forget to hit the bell notification icon so that you can get notified when new videos come out. Take care guys. Until next time.